You gotta be kidding me! This priest is the best dungeon healer. No, that's too true it is. No, this priest. No, that's too true it. This priest is. No, that title, I believe, belongs to Guardian Druids. Hey, what's going on, Guardian Druids? You ever get tired of dominating those DPS meters? Maybe interested in moving into some new real estate? Well, today we're going to change gears a little bit and see what it is we can tweak and tune to help those whose job it is to keep the team alive. Let's get into healing. Before we get started, I'd like to take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, and that is my Twitch channel. Without their love and support, I wouldn't be able to do this, so thank you, Rage Nation. Alright guys, by this time, you already know how it goes. We're going to be breaking it down based on talents, legendaries, and conduits. However, this time we're going to be taking a little bit more of a scrutinizing look at what it is that makes Guardian Druids so damn versatile. Unlike the last few guys we've done here, this one's going to be significantly more niche in its application. It's going to be reserved for those weeks where Bursting and Grievous cause the healer to require a little bit more help, a little bit more love. That's where you're going to get in there. Or maybe your team has a few extra CC abilities, allowing you to kite and heal while your healer focuses on laying out some more damage. Regardless of the playstyle you and your team choose to observe, we're in for another fun one, starting with talents. Now, while today's build is oriented around creating a stronger team healing guardian druid, it should also be noted that the higher output you have, the less chance you have of losing threat to an ally while in the kite phase of your pull. For that purpose, and in the interest of saving time and avoiding redundancies, I recommend using the offensive talents we chose for our top damage build linked in the video below. All right, now that that's out of the way, the two talents that we wanna take that will directly increase our immediate and heal over time effects are Restoration Affinity and Heart of the Wild. Restoration Affinity granting passive heals through a serious gift for you and your party when you're at max health, increasing your healing toolkit overall and giving you the extremely valuable Ursul's Vortex with regards to kiting. And Heart of the Wild, an absolutely massive five minute cooldown that substantially empowers the abilities granted by Restoration Affinity. That means once every five minutes you can step back, pop this, look at your party and say, hey, those 10 stacks of bursting give you any trouble? Not anymore. Once every five minutes you and the party get to take a trip to heal city population two you and this blushing healer who's about to get decimated on the meters all right now that you've got your talent sorted out we're going to be looking at legendaries now the legendary we chose today was circle of life and death this is for a couple different reasons. First of all, it's increasing your damage over time effects allows for you to generate even more threat during your Berserk and Incarnation phase. And secondly, it makes those heal over time effects a little more effective in a pinch, which is exactly what this build is oriented around, getting those heals out in the pinch situations where your healer needs just a little extra support. Now, finally for the conduits. At the point of making this video, I'm not seeing any ability to cross-contaminate, that is, use Resto Affinity Conduit Soulbinds as a Guardian Druid, which is probably for the best, because things could get absolutely nutty real fast. However, it would have been nice to try it out. That being said, three out of the four Soulbind Conduits I selected were chosen to increase my damage output and survivability during my Incarnation phases. As the pools you use Incarnation on are generally the larger ones in the dungeon, it makes sense that these are the ones you're going to want to increase your threat generation and decrease your health loss before before you switch into humanoid form to help the healer do his thing. Therefore, the soulbind conduits I chose for this were Layered Main, Endless Thirst, and Unchecked Aggression. The last soulbind conduit I selected plays both into self-healing and team healing. Innate Resolve will help add a nice little kick to your frenzied regens while also significantly empowering your regrowths cast on teammates. That means during tyrannical weeks when a boss casts a targeted bleed ability, pop Heart of the Wild, throw a regrowth on that teammate, and wipe the sweat from your healer's brow. As I said at the beginning, guys, this is an extremely niche build that is almost entirely hinged on the ability of your team to chain CC large pack pulls while the healer throws on some DPS trinkets and more offensive talents and gets in there with the rest of the DPS. However, on fortified weeks where quickly and efficiently moving through trash mobs may mean the difference between timing a key or not, a build like this could therein lie the key. All right, guys, it's time for me to shut my ugly looking gob and show you what it is we've been talking about. Remember, if you liked what you saw here today, please make sure to subscribe and hit that thumbs up button. Your support is what allows me to continue to do videos like this. If you really liked what you saw, check me out on Twitch. I stream Monday through Saturday, 5 p.m. EST until about 10. Vanquish their rear guard while I confront devils. Go in service.